fear, the absence of hope, the uncertainty of what tomorrow brings. Today we fear that those around us may suffer from an unseen virus which has taken the lives of many all around the world. We fear the tension and uprisings in different parts of the world. We fear how our lives will be. Where will we find the resources and the money to provide for our families? How long must this be? Why do I feel so scared? The situation is hopeless. 2,000 years ago, Mary and the disciples felt the same fear, seeing the man, the promised Messiah, near to a cross of wood, crying out in pain, in agony. The prophets foretold that a Savior would rise and come to save his people, but here he was, clinging to dear life. Was this man the Messiah? Was this the end of the road? Why did this have to happen? The situation was hopeless. The Savior of the world had died. He was laid to rest in the tomb, and one day some women came with spices, but were afraid because the body was not there. Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them, and the women were terrified that they fell to the ground. But the two men said, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. And then the two men spoke of how the Messiah told them that he would have to suffer and be crucified, but would rise on the third day. The situation was hopeless. It all made sense. The Messiah told them that he would die, but that he would also rise. Hope began to stir in their hearts. Fear had taken a back seat. Nothing could stop the joy in the hearts of these women. It did not stop here. The Messiah revealed himself to two men on the road to Emmaus. The two men were sad and downcast because of what happened to the Messiah. But later on, after staying a little while longer with them, they realized that this man was the Messiah. He had indeed risen from the dead. Fear and sadness had disappeared, and their hearts were now burning within them because of the Messiah's words and teaching of Scripture to them. The situation was hopeful. It is true! The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. This was the report the two men gave, and all of a sudden hope filled the world. Behold, the Son of Man, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, Jesus the Christ, was standing in the room. At first, they were afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus said, Do not fear. Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. A time of fear and hopelessness had now been replaced by hope and comfort. And right now, the world may be scary, and things may not be as bright and beautiful as they were before. But the Word of God tells us not to fear, but to have hope and to trust in God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27 verse 1. Do not be afraid. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. Deuteronomy 3, 22. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be God for them. Psalm 27 verse 3. Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong and fear not. Behold, the God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Isaiah 35 verse 4 It may feel like all hope is lost, but we have hope, and His name is Jesus. He is risen. He is with us and He is alive. He is our living hope.
lifers! Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us that Christ gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the bondage of sin and death according to the will of God the Father. It is for this reason that we rejoice in Him and worship Him in spirit and truth. Psalm 95 verse 1 to 7 says, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to Him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to Him. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. He holds in His hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to Him, for He made it. His hands formed the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God. We are the people He watches over, the flock under His care. Truly, our God is worthy of all our praise and adoration. He is our Maker, our Savior, the rock of our salvation. He conquered the grave. He freed every captive and broke every chain. He is faithful throughout every storm of life. He has done great things and will continuously do so until the day of Christ. Together, let us come and worship our Lord and King.
Hi, I'm Joan. I'm Zach. And today we would like to share with you how we experienced God's goodness this past year. The past year has been hard for everyone, and our own family was not spared of our share of challenges. Our office announced our work from home arrangement even a few days before the government announced the first lockdown. But due to the nature of my work, once ECQ was lifted, I went back to going to the office several times a week and even going to government offices so that I could meet my work requirements. Until the dreaded day came when I presented with COVID symptoms. And let me tell you, the almost three weeks of going through the symptoms and being on self-isolation was one of the hardest experiences I've ever had to live with. Yeah, when my mom got sick, we stayed far from each other and only talked to each other through video calls. At first, I was so sad and scared. We were all scared, especially in the first few days. Because I was living with children and my senior parents. We were doubly scared of what will happen to them if they got infected too. But I prayed, we prayed, extended family members and our friends also prayed with us. But more than healing and protection for our family, what I really prayed hard for was for peace, peace of mind. And that peace I could only get if I surrender everything to God. And God in His sovereign will heard my prayer and granted me what I prayed for. He not only gave me peace, but He healed me and spared the family from also getting the virus. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing. And thank you for your word which we hold on to. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7.
CF Kids Life Little Ones. I'm Teacher Tina and I'm very excited to be with you this Easter Sunday. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. Lord, I pray that we would learn our lesson today and grow to be more like you. Thank you for what Jesus did for us on the cross. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay. Now, I know you guys have your, all your materials ready because you've liked and followed and subscribed to Teacher Angel's Facebook and YouTube pages. So you have everything ready and you're all prepared. And Teacher Kim, after our lesson, is going to do your craft with you. I'm sure you're going to have a great time with that. Okay? Today is Easter Sunday. And what do we celebrate on Easter Sunday? We celebrate Jesus rising from the dead. Right? Because that is wonderful. Now, let's explain more about that. Do you know why Jesus came to earth? Because we are sinners, and we cannot be with God if we are sinners. Now, you remember what sin is. Sin is when you do something you know you're not supposed to do. So I sin, and my sister sins, and you sin, and mommy and daddy sin. Everybody sins, okay? And that means we can't be with God because we sin. But Jesus, remember back at Christmas, we celebrate Jesus came to earth and was born of Mary and Joseph. Because we've got the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit together. So Jesus was born of Mary and Joseph. And he grew up. And he paid our penalty. Right? Do you guys ever pay for something? Well, sin needs to be paid for. And Jesus died on the cross for my sin. What? Did Jesus stay dead? No. After three days, he rose from the grave and he went up to heaven to be with God. Now, do you know of anybody in the world who rose from the dead? No, I don't either. Have you ever uh, have you ever heard of anyone who was dead for three whole days and then rose from the dead? No, because Jesus is God and God is able to rise from the dead. Okay, so what we celebrate is that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sin and your sin. And after three days, he rose from the grave, just like he promised. And he went up to heaven to be with God, God the Father. Okay? So, whenever somebody asks you, why are you a Christian? Why are you happy at Easter? Because, you know, it actually is kind of sad if you think about it, that Jesus died. Because he, he did die. Right? But we celebrate because he rose from the dead. And that gives us hope. Because we will one day be in heaven with him. So, let's talk about our memory verse for today. All right? In Luke chapter 24, all right, verse 6. Okay, so I'll read part of it for you so you can remember better. It'll go back. Luke chapter 23. Now, there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to the ruler's decision, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He then took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud. It's kind of like a sheet, right? And laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned home and prepared spices and ointments. And on the Sabbath day, they rested like they were supposed to. So what happened was, they, Jesus was on the cross and he died. And this man, he took his body, he cleaned it, he wrapped it in the sheet, and he buried it. And these women, they watched and they said, oh, after the Sabbath, we're going to come back and we're going to put ointment and spices to give him a proper burial. Now, I don't know if you've ever gone to a funeral before. Um, because they can be very sad times. And I don't know if you've been to one before. But they put different things on uh, the body. So that when people visit, it's not so uh, unpleasant. Okay? So that's what these women are going to do. Okay? They were going to come back with all these ointments and spices. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed, they were puzzled about this. Behold, two men stood before them in bright clothing. And as they were frightened and bowed with their faces to the ground, the men said to them, 
Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while you were still in Galilee? That the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the apostles and all the rest. Okay? Because before Jesus died, he said, I must die, and I will rise from the dead, and I will go and see you. Right? And so the, these women, they had forgotten that, and these angels, these men, they reminded them of that. Okay? And so that is what we're going to do today. And on Easter Sunday, we are going to remember that Jesus rose from the dead. And that gives us hope, right? Because Jesus rose from the dead, he paid for our sins and we can be with God. Okay? So let's practice our memory verse. Our memory verse is going to be Luke 24, verse 6. He is not here, but has risen. Okay, so let's practice. Um, he is not here. He has risen. All right? Because that's the most exciting thing. We should be very excited, right? He is not here. He is risen. All right? Can you guys practice that at home? Right? And you can remember, that is why we can be so happy on Easter Sunday as we remember Jesus died for our sins, but he has risen. All right? I hope you guys remember that and practice your memory first. Luke 24, verse 6. He is not here. He has risen. All right? Hope you practice that. Let's pray, and then you can have your craft time with Teacher Kim. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you that you rose from the dead and paid for our sins. In your name I pray, amen. Bye for now. Thank you, Teacher, for your wonderful Bible story. Hello and good day, Kid Lifers. It's me, Teacher Kim, your Sunday school teacher for ages 2 to 3. I hope you have enjoyed today's story. So, for today's arts and crafts, I have a wonderful activity for you and your parents to do together. Are you ready? Let's begin!
today's activity. Surprise! It's me, Teacher Kim again. In celebration of Easter Sunday, let's do another arts and crafts activities with your mommies and daddies. All right, here we go. kids enjoyed making this activity. I sure did. Before we leave, do you remember our Bible verse? Alright kids, enjoy your day. Until next time, bye and God bless. Happy Easter! must have felt when Jesus died. If I were there, I definitely would have felt sad and afraid just like all the disciples. But when Jesus came back to life, suddenly there was so much hope. That is right, Jesus. Jesus had been telling his disciples that he would have to die on the cross and he would also rise up after three days. What he had told them came true. So we learned that we have hope in the Lord because he always keeps his promises. Do you know why Jesus had to die on the cross? He did that because of our sins. We needed someone to save us because as the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. Jesus rescued us from our sin, from our darkness. 
so that we may know Him and have eternal life. This is such a beautiful promise. Indeed, it is. Because Jesus rose again. We have hope. This is our main Bible point. We have hope that our sins have been forgiven and that we are now His children and His friends. Because Jesus rose again, we have hope! Hmm. You know what, Mom? I'm thankful to Jesus for what He has done. He loved us even when we did not deserve His love or His forgiveness. I want our friends watching here on Kids Life to also receive this gift which Jesus paid on the cross. That's a thoughtful of you, Jesus. God bless your heart. So kids, do you also want to receive Jesus into your heart and life? When you have Him in your life, there will be so much hope and purpose. When we ask Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of our lives, we will not worry what happens to us when we die because we will live forever with Jesus in heaven. And even now on earth, we can have the same hope because Jesus is with us. As His children and friends, He will take care of us and guide us. I'd like to invite you now to pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross to save me from my sins. I am sorry for the many times I have done what is wrong and sinned against you. I believe with all my heart that you are the only Lord Jesus who can forgive me of all my sins and give me eternal life. Please cleanse and forgive me of all my sins. I now ask you to come to my heart to be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You see, if we say sorry to Jesus for our sins, He will forgive us and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Jesus now becomes our Lord and Savior of our lives. We are forgiven of our sins, the past, the present, the future, and we are given eternal life. We will now and forever live in God. Isn't that amazing? By the way, welcome to the family of the Lord. That is right, kids. Welcome, indeed. To let your parents know if you made that important decision in your life. And most of all, do let us know too on Kids Life. Let's now respond in worship to Jesus for all that He has done. Thank you for
So dear kids life family, let us not be afraid but put our hope and trust in the Lord. We worship a living God, a resurrected Savior. He will carry us and see us through. That is right, Mommy. There is another beautiful verse that is very powerful. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Amen. A blessed Easter, dear Kids Life family. Take, Take care and stay.